this is a historical moment, incidentally, because uh, we're giving an award. I'm, I'm here to give the award to, to Rosa Parks. You know? Now, it's been said that our next, when our next honoree sat down, the whole world turned around. The civil rights movement began effectively in America uh, the moment Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on the bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Her story is a reminder of the individual's power to act, to alter lives, and make a difference in this world. In 1955, Montgomery, Alabama was one of the most segregated cities in the South. The symbols of white supremacy were everywhere, and nowhere were they more visible than on the city's bus lines. For black people, riding the bus was an especially humiliating experience. Forced to enter from and ride in the back of the bus, they were also expected to give up their seats to white passengers upon demand. On December 1, 1955, Rosa Parks and three other black people were ordered to give up their seats to whites. Rosa alone refused. I didn't get on with the intention of being arrested. I felt that when he used the words, y'all make it light on yourselves and let me have those seats, that I could not see where it was helping me as an individual and as a passenger, or us as a people, to continue to give in to this type of uh, treatment. Mrs. Parks was arrested and charged with violating the city's segregation laws. When she was thrown in jail, then everybody said, well, if Rosa Parks can't be treated right on the bus, uh, nobody can be treated right on the bus. And she was the kind of person who had the total respect of the community. And they rallied around her and started a movement. We, the Negro citizens, have decided not to ride the buses in Montgomery until we receive some justice and until we get a hearing, even if it takes a year. Rosa Parks' arrest touched a sensitive nerve in Montgomery's residents. It united the community and focused its frustration. Black people refused to board city buses and became the vanguard of America's civil rights movement. White racists in Montgomery didn't sit idle. Rosa Parks and other boycott leaders were insulted, harassed, and exposed to constant danger. On December 20th, 1956, the Supreme Court order declaring segregation on buses unconstitutional reached Montgomery. The year-old protest against city buses is officially called off, and the Negro citizens of Montgomery are urged to return to the buses tomorrow morning on a non-segregated basis. The days of submission and accommodation in the South were gone. Black Americans were now boldly proclaiming a new day. Rosa Parks stood up for her rights as a human being and became a catalyst for change. Her act of courage was the spark that lit the fires of freedom throughout the South. Her life is a portrait of dignity. She is a woman who truly made a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Robert Kennedy, Jr. In 1966, my father had Rosa Parks in mind when he spoke the following words at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. Each time a man stands up for an ideal, or acts to improve the lot of others, or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. And crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current that can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Rosa Parks ignited the flame that destroyed American apartheid and made this country a true constitutional democracy for the first time in its history. In that sense, her courageous act, sitting on a bus and refusing to move, was as important to our nation's formation as was Paul Revere's ride or the Boston Tea Party, and Rosa Parks is as much an American hero as any of those who died in the Revolutionary War or signed the Declaration of Independence. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor to present 
the 1993 Essence Award to someone who in many ways made it possible for all of us to have an evening as dignified as this, Ms. Rosa Parks. This is a wonderful evening. It's a long way from the suffering that we endured in Alabama. But for some reason, I had the faith and I prayed that we would one day not have to be insulted, mistreated, and sometimes physically hurt and often killed because we just wanted to be free people. We were so very fortunate that young Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. came on the scene at that time and that he, along with so many others, helped to make our protests the success that it was. We will never go back to where we once were. And I just said this is a wonderful night and I shall never forget it. It shall live in my memory as long as I'm here. Thank you. The inspiring act of bravery has won you the respect and admiration of all freedom-loving Americans. Tonight, Ms. Kathleen Battle lifts her voice and song in your honor. Right in his hand, he's got the beasts of the field. 